The challenge with energy efficiency through the BMS and control strategy optimization, when you really get into it, it often happens that while you're focusing on and optimizing one control system or one control strategy, it can easily result in negatively impacting on a control strategy further downstream of the system where you're working on. In today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about chilled water supply temperature reset. This is a control strategy that is in 80% of all BMS designs, where we are describing how as we increase the supply water temperature set point of the chiller from six degrees Celsius to seven, eight, nine, ten, that that control strategy referencing the demand from the field would result in the chiller running more efficiently. So the COP, the coefficient of performance of the chiller would improve as we slightly raise the chiller's supply water temperature set point. In today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you why that doesn't always save energy. And in a lot of cases, it can result in the overall system either not saving energy or actually wasting energy. Now, if we were gonna do a little test of this before we actually implemented the control strategy, what we might do is we'd open up our BMS graphic and we'd have say two running chillers and we would right click override the temperature set point from six degrees Celsius up to seven degrees Celsius. We'd do that and we'd watch the system and we'd see that the chiller temperature starts to gradually increase from six towards seven. And then we would probably see that the chiller's COP, the coefficient of performance improve. And the COP basically is a, a calculation or a ratio between the amount of kilowatts of cooling refrigerant that's been generated and the amount of electrical kilowatts that we're drawing to run the compressors and, and the chiller. So if we can deliver the same 500 kilowatts of cooling refrigerant and draw less electrical power, the COP will increase. So we'll be sitting there and we're watching the temperature come up and we'll see the COP go from six to seven or whatever it is and we'll start getting really excited about that. We think, oh, this is gonna be the easiest $5,000 project I ever earned in my life. And then you right click and you override the temperature set point from seven to eight and you watch it and the temperature comes up slightly and it should be more efficient. And we're getting very excited about that and uh, you know, telling all our friends and our colleagues and our, our, our client how, what a great job we're doing here. But what we haven't realized, <coughs> excuse me, is that when that chill water temperature set point went from six to seven and then to eight, that warmer temperature from the chillers went through the pumps and completely throughout your entire building. You know, 10 floors, 20 floors, 30 floors, 50 floor building, hundreds and hundreds of chill water valves just slightly cracked open 10%. Because that eight degrees Celsius went through the coil, and when that happened, the air handling unit's supply air temperature increased. Because obviously there's less cooling capacity available than there was when we had six degrees Celsius. So obviously the, the PID loop or the PR loop in the controller detects the supply air temperature increasing, and it opens the cooling valve to compensate and when all those hundreds and hundreds of air handling units and fan call units and chill beams and chiller induction boxes and heat exchanger control valves, as they all opened up, um, the building system pressure dropped and the pumps speeded up to bring it back up to set point. So if you were sitting at your graphic with your tunnel vision on that, those chillers as their COP increased, if you just shifted over a bit your vision onto the right hand side of the graphic where the big primary pumps were, or if you had secondary chiller pumps and you open that page up, you would see that, you would probably see that as those chillers were drawing less electrical power, the pumps were drawing more electrical power. So as you're doing your test and you went from six to seven, if you actually considered the chiller power, the pump power and the overall system power, you might have seen that from six to seven, the chillers saved lots of power the pumps drew some power, but the overall chiller system consumption was improving, and that'd be good. But if you went from seven to eight or to nine, you might start to see it balance out and eventually get to the point where we've got pumps running at full design speed, all the chiller valves fully open, and drawing a lot of power on all these pumps. Like our pumps might stage up from two pumps to three pumps, 
full design power, 300 liters per second of water going out there. So you might see that. This control strategy is always implemented. And even in my BMS specification, I have the same control strategy where it describes, you know, understanding what the building's load is and using that as the load's decreasing to raise the temperature to make the chillers more efficient. But, you know, in the, um, in the control strategy course, in the manual, where we actually describe and talk about this, there's a section that says like, hey, be careful. If you're going to do this, you have to consider the knock-on effect of that. So if you were putting a fee into your client and you were saying, look, we're going to charge you $5,000, we're going to optimize this supply temperature reset strategy, and this happens, um, and there'll be some sort of a payback and you're going to save energy, you have to allow in your proposal that you're going to spend 40 hours over the next three, four, five, six months as the seasons change to continually tune that and understand that. Like you need to build some virtual points where you can try and understand the, the complete chiller system. Now, in this video, we're not talking about the supply water temperature reset or how we do that. This video is about just stopping and thinking about, hold on a sec, what's the knock-on effect? Because no one's doing that. And you know, the, the YouTube analytics tells me that you guys like technical videos, you like technical stuff. So this is a sort of technical video. You don't like the big picture type stuff that I sometimes get excited about. This is a good example of where there's a technical thing, a good thing. It makes your children more efficient. But if you're not stepping back and looking at the big picture, there will be so many buildings out there that we are wasting energy through implementing energy efficient control strategies. And the thing is that whatever you work out on one building, it doesn't flow on to other buildings. So you, it depends on what chiller you have, how efficient the chillers are, how good the cooling towers are, how old the pumps are, how efficient the pumps are. There's, there's all pieces together. So on one job, you could raise from six to seven, awesome. And there'll be other jobs where you can actually go from six to eight and um, achieve good outcomes. So you have to start thinking about the big picture of this control strategy optimization project. Now, just to end off, where I think this whole thing originated from, this is my opinion. Um, chiller manufacturers, they want to sell chillers. So chiller manufacturers will um, often, in their chiller management systems, and the way they market and promote their chillers, because they want to have the most efficient chiller. If you've got a chiller A here, you know, six COP, chiller B, seven COP, people are going to buy their chiller. So chiller manufacturers will talk about different ways to make their chillers run more efficiently. In my opinion, they don't really tend to consider the entire system as a whole because they don't care about the whole system as a whole. You know, us as the BMS professionals, we care about the entire system. So often a lot of the control strategy we've been adopting over the years, and we'll do a second one next week on um, the cooling tower condenser water temperature reset. But a lot of these things that we're being told to do and you know, for, for good faith and good reason why we're being told to do this, it actually isn't maybe a good idea overall. So um, keep that in mind. As usual, if you got some value out of this video and you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week.